In today's video, I'm going to show you how we can easily blend our subjects into their background and give you some tips and tricks along the way. Let's check it out. Hello everyone and welcome to Blended Graphics. My name is Jason Ortega and for today in the next two days following this episode, we're going to focus solely on blending subjects into their background. This is just going to be a little bit of a mini series because I've gotten a lot of requests um, through Instagram asking how I blend my subjects and different objects into their environment. So I thought, you know what, let's focus on that in these next couple of episodes. Today we're going to use Ant-Man as our main subject and we're going to put him into the city background and just blend him in there. I'll give you some tips and tricks along the way. Um, following today's episode, the next two episodes, we are going to use a different composition and it'll be a lot more in-depth tutorial of how I do this. Today is just going to be more of a breakdown and just to kind of give you an overall idea as to my approach and the process to how I tackle this. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. All right, so here's our background image that we're going to use. I believe I got this from unsplash.com. And then we're going to throw an Ant-Man, uh, which I've already extracted him from the background. And this is actually already a complete composition. I've already went ahead and shut off all of our layers except for our main subject in the background. And like I said, this is just going to be a breakdown layer by layer of how we can build this up and blend our subject in. So the very first thing that I wanted to do with this background layer and it's not going to be the main focus of this video, so I'm not going to really walk through and talk through of how I accomplished this, but essentially all of those lights in the background, I just wanted to make them more intense and more bright. So I added a few glow layers on top of all of those lights in there, just using a solid color and painting on top, just to um, make them stand out even more than what they already were. All right, so the very first thing that I do when it comes to blending any object or subject with their background is I wanna take care of their lighting levels first. And something that can actually help us out along the way is using a black and white adjustment layer. So let's go down to the bottom and we'll add one of those first. And this will just kind of be a guide along the way for us. And right off the bat, it doesn't look too bad. Um, you can tell that some of the brightest points on him matches the light in the background, which is a little off, so we will have to take care of that. But overall, we're at a good starting point and won't have to do too many adjustments when it comes to the lighting. So for now, we can go ahead and click that eyeball and turn off this layer. And then we can go into our Ant-Man group and see what we're working with. To take care of the lighting, I first added an exposure adjustment layer and then a brightness and contrast adjustment layer to bring down the lighting even more so, as well as decrease the contrast. From here, we can turn back on our black and white adjustment layer. And now the costume isn't as bright as it was before, it's toned down. The brightest spot on our character should be all of those metal parts like his helmet and by his arm because that's going to be reflecting the light the most from all of our scenery. Okay, so let's hide that layer once more. And now our next step is we want to start to match some of those tones with our background layer. I first added a human saturation adjustment layer and I wanted to desaturate a lot of the red in his costume. Because we have two prominent tones, in our background layer, we have the cyan on the right side and the orangish yellow on the left. I added two different gradient maps. One obviously that's gonna be blue and one that is orange. I inverted the map and then I painted back some of the color on the respective sides to help bring those tones in. So let's first turn on our blue. And if I hold down the shift key and click on the layer mask, you can see what the overall effect would look like without that layer mask. So let's shift and click on that again to get it back to normal. And we can now turn on our orange gradient map to fill in that left side. Okay, I'm gonna add a new layer in and we're gonna start working with our highlights. So all of these little spots that I'm gonna kind of trace along the edge here are gonna be the areas that are most affected and will have the most amount of highlights on our character. And it makes sense that the outer edges of our character's body are gonna be the most affected by the highlights because all of the light is coming from the left and right side of the streets and not so much in front of him or directly behind him. So we're gonna first go ahead and turn on our highlights. And I made this first adjustment using a levels adjustment layer by increasing the highlights and inverting the mask and then just painting white on those edges. Here's a quick before and after. And with highlights, it obviously makes sense to have shadows so that way we can help create this contrast. So the areas closest to the center of his body or the inside of his legs are gonna be the darkest. 
And I also added another levels adjustment layer to again to achieve this effect. And it's a very subtle addition, but it's enough to give us that realistic contrast that we're looking for. I also added some shadow underneath our character on the ground, so I'll turn that on. And then from here, I added additional highlights by sampling the colors from our lights from the environment and then painting that onto our character itself and playing around with some of the blend modes that work best for this effect. And I'll turn all of these off again so you can see what that build up looks like. So they're off. And let's turn back on. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and turn back on our black and white adjustment layer and let's refer back to that to see how we are now at this point. All right, so that contrast looks really good and a lot of our costume is matching the same light that's already reflected onto the street. The helmet and the different chrome parts of his costume is also looking bright, but not too bright that it's as intent as our actual light source from our environment. So we're definitely looking really good now. We can turn that back off again. And we're at the point now where we're just kind of adding those final touches onto our character. And so with this, I added some glows onto his arm piece. And then I also added some glows onto his eyes so that I can make those stand out as well. All right, so our character itself, he looks great. I mean, I think his lighting looks really nice. I think the tones match that of the colors of the environment. However, he still looks a little disconnected from our background. And so there's a, a couple of things that I do to kind of help tie that in really nicely and really help solidify uh, that blend is I want to add some atmosphere effects and I usually add a little bit of haze into a lot of my compositions. So I'm going to close this group up now and we're going to get into our background effects layer and I'm going to turn on our haze effect. And it's really easy to accomplish this effect. All you need is a cloud brush, sample some of those colors in our background, and then just with a low opacity, just paint some of that in. I'm going to add another haze effect on top of this overall composition. However, before I do that, I'm going to merge all these layers together and put it through the camera raw filter. So I'll do that now. And because we have that haze in the background and on the street, it makes sense that some of that would be on top of him as well. So I wanted to accomplish that to help tie everything in nicely. So I use the soft round brush tip, set at a low opacity, sample some colors on our background and painted a little bit of that on top of him. And that was our final little touch to this piece. All right, so just to kind of bring us back to where we started from, let's go back to our original image, looking pretty boring and flat. And now let's go back to where we just ended things up after all of those additions. And there really weren't too many steps to create this effect. And there was a, such a huge transformation. You know, we took care of our lighting levels first, adjusted our color grading to match the tones to that of our environment. We added some highlights and shadows, uh, added some glows, and then we added some haze effects to our atmosphere. So like I said, not a lot of different steps. And the more you practice this, it just becomes secondhand nature and it becomes muscle memory. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, guys. Come back in tomorrow where, like I said, we're going to break this down even more. We're going to use a different composition and we're just going to reinforce all of these different habits that we just learned with this video. I hope to see you soon. Take care, everyone.